Oh, it's Android. I mean, it's Android O. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at some of the new features that I've seen and played around with in our first developer preview of Android O, and we shall see some exciting stuff. So, here it goes. To start off, let's take a look at the settings app. This is what the temporary Android O logo looks like, just a circle with orange layers. The Easter egg is the same as the one you can find on Nougat, so you can feed and collect cats here as well. You'll also notice that the settings icon and app look different. So first off, they've removed the hamburger swipe menu, along with a dedicated support tab, which has been relocated to the bottom. More strikingly, it looks like they've bleached the whole app, so now it's black on white, and have removed the settings grouping for similar items for now. This is something that you probably have to get used to, but I'm sure this will likely be changed as we head towards its final release. Now apps and notifications is where it gets heavy, so there's a bit to cover here. They've added a special access option where you can grant or deny certain apps from certain system functions such as battery optimization, device administration, do not disturb access, and the new API they've added, picture in picture. This is also where you can find the new install other apps security measure. In Android O, each app has its own express permission to install other apps, and you'll be asked to enable it when an app attempts to install an app for you or you can go ahead and enable that from this menu. You'll also probably see this when you use Chrome to download and install APKs. Now heading back into the app info section and taking a look at a particular app, we can see that it has been worked on quite a bit. The real stars of the show are the new options for notifications, where here we can change how the app displays its notifications. Toggling off the miscellaneous switch will block all notifications from that app, kind of like a master switch. Tapping just to the left will reveal more options for its notifications. From there you can change the importance levels of the notifications that arrive. If you choose an option that includes either sound or visual alerts, you'll be greeted with an additional option such as always vibrate, changing the notification sound exclusively, changing what content is shown on the lock screen, and apps can be enabled to show notifications when you have the do not disturb mode on to priority only. A few other things regarding notifications that I've seen so far are the apps that send more than one notification in quick succession. Instead of overlapping the previous one they sent, they now stack under each other like so. Instead of having the usual icon for showing that there are more than hidden notifications, we now see dots representing the number of notifications that aren't shown near the middle of the status bar and up to three notifications. Another nice addition to this area is the new animations for notification icons when they appear and when they're dismissed. The overflow of notifications in the expanded notification shade also have this new display and animation to it as well. Notifications can also be snoozed now, something that we have seen before on some custom ROMs. Swipe away slowly to reveal the new clock icon and then tapping on that will snooze the notifications from an adjustable time from 15 minutes to an hour. In addition to that, the signal icons now appear when the notification shade is fully expanded, which makes it a little squished as you can see here. One of the bigger changes reside in the quick tiles. Now there are two sections for most toggles, especially the connection related ones. Tapping on the text will turn the connection on and then show you the expanded view of the tile, while tapping on the icon itself will directly toggle either Wi-Fi or mobile data or even do not disturb. Persistent notifications such as the one for CF Lumen and Pebble are now collapsed by default, making it much cleaner when you don't have that many notifications. One more little thing that I've noticed is that when you uninstall an app, it shows a notification with a no entry icon saying which app is being uninstalled currently as well. Moving on to the battery menu, we now have a new battery percentage graphic looking quite similar to the ones that we can see on modern Samsung devices. Scrolling down, we see a breakdown of percentage used per app as well as some general stats that we usually look for, such as the screen on time. When tapping on the battery graphic section, we are presented with a minimal breakdown of battery usage since the last full charge, and tapping on individual apps here will give you a battery report on the usage details. The storage menu has changed a little and with a slightly different interface. We can see categories from our apps, such as photos and videos, to other apps. Tapping on files will launch their somewhat upgraded file manager which is now actually being renamed from documents to files and you can see that on the app launcher as well. We have options to free up space on our device where we choose from an OS curated list of files although this seems to be quite limited at the moment. In security and screen lock we can see a new category first up where we can check for security updates which shows the same system updates activity 
and also where we can configure Google's own in-house app verification service. The install from unknown sources checkbox has also been removed and is now on a per app basis as I've explained before. Most of the about device menus and the ones regarding the system have all been put into a dedicated system menu near the bottom of the settings screen. Now here you can find the languages and in input, date and time, backup, developer options, system updates, reset device, about phone, and the system UI tuner, which we'll go into more detail very soon. There are a few new developer options now. The developer quick setting tiles now have to be manually enabled before they appear on the list of quick tiles. And now if we scroll down a little further to networking, there are new options for those who use Bluetooth audio. You can now change the codec, and I've heard some people that are quite happy about aptX, along with several other codecs that are now available to be used, as well as several other streaming and audio settings for Bluetooth. Last but not least for the settings app, the system UI tuner has had a few changes to it, and I'll briefly go over that. Within the status bar, the battery percentage option now shows on the right-hand side of the battery icon, instead of the previously ridiculously sized text inside the battery icon. And now I'm not sure if the time settings are new, but you can now choose to display the seconds of the clock as well. The navigation bar menu has also made a return, one starting with the layout options, and they include normal, compact, left-leaning, and right-leaning. Perhaps they can add a swipe gesture to switch between the left and right leaning options on the fly later on. We can at least change the left and rightmost button options with the keyboard switcher is usually located on the right hand side, and they now have limited options right now, but they include a clipboard option where you can drag copied text into text fields to paste into. Key code is to assign a key code number, so that'll type that out when pressed, and you can set it out to type out symbols and other things I suppose. The keyboard switcher is uh, the keyboard switcher where it opens up a menu of virtually enabled input methods for you to choose from, and of course none if you don't want any there. Last up are the new lock screen options. Now you can change the left and right lock screen shortcuts, uh, which are usually the voice and camera options. From there you can choose different apps to launch as well as their shortcuts, and I've noticed that it doesn't show all the apps that you have installed on your phone either. Well all in all this makes Android O look pretty interesting at this point. If anything changes along the development process, I'll probably make a video on that. So anyways, that's it for this video. If I've missed anything, I'm terribly sorry, but please let us know down below in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you all in the next one.